There are several advantages in using baked textures over procedural textures. Procedural textures do give more flexibility, especially afterwards if you want to tweak stuff. However, baked textures have a lighter CPU load and can be imported within Blender for use within Eevee and give you displacement within Eevee. Or you can actually import them within game engines such as Unity or Unreal or 3D websites such as Sketchfab. Now, baking is actually really not that hard. So let's get started and let's get into it. In this video, we'll be using this amazing roof tile texture by Benjamin Roman. He's very talented and this is a amazing procedural material and we will be converting it to actually baked textures. Now the process is very, very simple. I am currently within cycles and I have my material over here with the displacement enabled. We want to start baking these materials. Now, first of all, what we need to do is we need to open up a workspace where we can actually do this. So I have the shading workspace open and this is the actual node tree. Now, if we go over here and we add in a image texture node, we can just place it anywhere. Don't plug it in, just leave it there. Now hit new and let's create a new image or texture. I'm going to call this texture bake and I'm going to give it a resolution for a 4K texture. Textures come in 1024 increments. So basically meaning a 1K texture is 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels and a 4K texture is four times of that. So just type in the actual value times four and hit OK and you should be good to go. Now we have a 4K texture called bake and we have our object over here. If we now hit bake, we will get a strange result, which will not be very good for a tolerable texture. And if we hop on over to the UV editing workspace, I will show you why that is. So this is our UV sphere. And if we go over to the UVs over here, so the actual unwrap for this sphere, you will see it has all of these triangles. Now these triangles are basically the top and bottom parts of our UV sphere and they will create uh, triangles within our texture, which is definitely not something that you want for a square and tileable texture. So instead, let's go ahead and disable our object over here and let's just add in a new object, in this case a plane. We are going to do nothing with it, but if I go into edit mode over here, you will see that the entire plane consists out of one face which is completely filling our UV workspace. Head on over back to shading and with our plane selected, let's open up the image editor. Since we have our plane selected, let's add in our material to this plane. So the procedural roof tiles, which we already added to the UV sphere here. And it still has this big node in there. If we now select this bake node and we have our plane selected, we can go up here and open up the bake texture. Now let me zoom out a little bit and you will see that the bake texture currently is just a black square because we haven't baked anything to it yet. Again, with the plane selected and with the actual node selected, let's hop on over here and let's go to the render properties and down to the bake menu. Now the bake menu is only available when you are in cycles. So make sure you are. If we have a look at our material, you can see it has several inputs. It has the base color roughness, a normal and a displacement input. So that means we need to bake four maps for this texture. First of all, let's bake our base color. Now within the I don't know, how do you call it? Like the material world? Oh, that's weird, I'm not Madonna. Okay, so within the texture workflow, uh, base color is usually called the diffuse color. So we want to bake the diffuse type. So set the bake type to diffuse. And now you will see it has these three contributions, direct, indirect, and color. Direct and indirect basically mean direct and indirect light. So the lamps within our scene will also have an effect on our texture. And that's definitely not something that we want. So let's disable both these two. And now with just the color enabled, we can hit bake. All right, so after taking a bit to render, we now have a nice square texture of our material. We can zoom in and it, it has a decent resolution. It's a 4K resolution. And this is the color map. So you will see this asterisk next to this image over here. And if you click it, this basically means that it hasn't been saved yet. So hit save as, choose a save location. I have already exported mine over here, um, but just give it a proper name, something to do with base color. Uh, so you know what it is. All right, so that's the diffuse color. Now, next up is the roughness. If we now change the bake type from diffuse to roughness, and hit bake again, we can now bake our roughness map. All right, so there's our roughness map, nice and detailed if you uh, check it out up close. And next we wanna bake our normal, so that's our third. So let's change this to the normal and let's hit bake again. All right, so there's our normal map third. And finally, we need to bake our displacement. But if we click here, you will see there is no actual height or displacement option. So somehow you are not able to bake the displacement output. Now, there's actually a very 
easy workaround for this. And that's because we have this height output over here. So if I preview this displacement map and I go back into the 3D viewport over here, this is the plane we are working with. You can see the output for our displacement here. Now, this is not what we want because displacement or a height map needs to be a black and white map. So if we take this and we actually instead use this height input over here and not the displacement map input, you will see we now have a perfect black and white map, black representing this things going inward and white representing the values going outward. So we can actually use just the height output here, but we can't render this viewer node. So instead, let's just remove it and re-enable our principled BSDF here. And instead of using the base color, so this value over here, we are going to remove it and we are going to take the actual height here and plug that into the base color. All right, so we now have the height in the base color. Again, we need to bake the base color, so the diffuse, and we want to disable direct and indirect again. Let's make sure our node in here is selected and our plane is also still selected and let's hit bake. All right, so that was very quick actually. And we now have a perfect height map. So let's go ahead and make sure we save this one as well, just like we did with all the other ones. And we have now a complete texture pack with four textures to complete our material. All right, so this is our cycles material, still looking mighty fine. Hide it for now, add in a new UV sphere here, which I'm going to select and I'm going to add in a new material as well, which I'm going to call roof tile textures. All right, so let's open up a new window here and set this to the shader editor. And with our principal BSDF selected, let's hit Control Shift T. Now this is a Node Wrangler add-on function. So make sure you go into preferences, into add-ons, look up the Node Wrangler add-on and make sure you have that enabled. Now let's open up our texture map where we saved all of our textures, select all of them and hit principled texture setup. Now there you go. This is starting to work. Uh, our material is just not showing any displacement and that's because we need to enable it. So let's go down here into the displacement and change it from bump only to displacement and bump. Now it will be a tad strong. So let's make sure to set the skill here to 0.2 and we're good to go. So basically what we have now is we have two of the same materials, one being fully procedural. So that's this one and the other one being the texture version. So everything is working as it should. However, if we still hop over to Eevee, you will see we still get no displacement. And there's actually a very easy fix for this. If you go over to the modifiers tab and we add in a displace modifier, we can now click on the new icon here, click on these two bars over there and hit open. We can now select our height texture and we should be getting something. Okay, so there is some displacement going on. Now let's go over to our modifiers again and let's change our coordinate system from local to UV and we should be getting the proper displacement again. Now let's change the strength to 0.2 again and there you go. Now we have it again and everything should look nice. And there you have it. The material works perfectly within Eevee due to us baking the textures. So I hope you learned something and if you did then please leave a like and subscribe. I want to thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one. Thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel.